The notion of the Big Bang goes back nearly 100 years, when the first evidence for the expanding universe appeared. If the universe is expanding and cooling today, that implies a past that was smaller, denser, and hotter. In our imaginations, we can extrapolate back to arbitrarily small sizes, high densities and hot temperatures, all the way to a singularity, where all of the universe's matter and energy was condensed in a single point. For many decades, these two notions of the Big Bang, of the hot, dense state that describes the early universe and the initial singularity, were inseparable. But beginning in the 1970s, scientists started identifying some puzzles surrounding the Big Bang, noting several properties of the universe that weren't explainable within the context of these two notions simultaneously. When cosmic inflation was first put forth and developed in the early 1980s, it separated the two definitions of the Big Bang, proposing that the early, hot, dense state never achieved these singular conditions, but rather that a new inflationary state preceded it. There really was a universe before the hot Big Bang, and some very strong evidence from the 21st century truly proves that it's so. It means that the Big Bang wasn't the absolute beginning. Although we're certain that we can describe the very early universe as being hot, dense, rapidly expanding and full of matter and radiation by the hot Big Bang, the question of whether that was truly the beginning of the universe or not is one that can be answered with evidence. The differences between a universe that began with a hot Big Bang and a universe that had an inflationary phase that precedes and sets up the hot Big Bang are subtle but tremendously important. After all, if we want to know what the very beginning of the universe was, we need to look for evidence from the universe itself. In a hot Big Bang that we extrapolate all the way back to a singularity, the universe achieves arbitrarily hot temperatures and high energies. Although the universe will have an average density and temperature, there will be imperfections throughout it, over-dense regions and under-dense regions alike. As the universe expands and cools, it also gravitates, meaning that over-dense regions will attract more matter and energy into them, growing over time, while under-dense regions will preferentially give up their matter and energy into the denser surrounding regions, creating the seeds for an eventual cosmic web of structure. But what about cosmic inflation? Evidence for this phase comes from several key observations. Firstly, the uniformity of the cosmic microwave background radiation, the afterglow of the Big Bang, shows minute temperature fluctuations that match predictions from inflation. Secondly, the large-scale structure of the universe, the way galaxies are distributed across the cosmos, also aligns with inflationary models. Finally, the discovery of primordial gravitational waves Ripples in space-time caused by inflation provides further support for this theory. But the details that will emerge in the cosmic web are determined far earlier, as the seeds of the large-scale structure were imprinted in the very early universe. Today's stars, galaxies, clusters of galaxies and filamentary structure on the largest scales of all can be traced back to density imperfections, from when neutral atoms first formed in the universe. These seeds would grow over hundreds of millions and even billions of years into the rich cosmic structure we see today. Those seeds exist all throughout the universe and remain even today as temperature imperfections in the Big Bang's leftover glow, the cosmic microwave background. As measured by the WMAP satellite in the 2000s and its successor, the Planck satellite in the 2010S, these temperature fluctuations appear on all scales and correspond to density fluctuations in the early universe. The link is because of gravitation and the fact that within general relativity, the presence and concentration of matter and energy determine the curvature of space. Light has to travel from the region of space where it originates to the observer's eyes, and that means the over-dense regions with more matter and energy than average will appear colder than average as the light must climb out of a larger gravitational potential well. The under-dense regions with less matter and energy than average will appear hotter than average as the light has a shallower than average gravitational potential well to climb out of. The average density regions will appear as an average temperature, the mean temperature of the cosmic microwave background. But where did these imperfections come from, initially? 
These temperature imperfections that we observe in the Big Bang's leftover glow come to us from an epoch that's already 380,000 years after the start of the hot Big Bang, meaning they've already experienced 380,000 years of cosmic evolution. The story is quite different depending on which explanation you turn towards. According to the singular Big Bang explanation, the universe was simply born with an original set of imperfections, and these imperfections grew and evolved according to the rules of gravitational collapse, particle interactions, and radiation interacting with matter, including the differences between normal and dark matter. According to the inflationary origin theory, however, where the hot Big Bang only arises in the aftermath of a period of cosmic inflation, these imperfections are seeded by quantum fluctuations, that is, fluctuations that arise due to the inherent energy-time uncertainty relation in quantum physics that occur during the inflationary period when the universe is expanding exponentially. These quantum fluctuations generated on the smallest scales get stretched to larger scales by inflation, while newer, later time fluctuations get stretched to top them, creating a superposition of these fluctuations on all distance scales. In the singular Big Bang, the types of fluctuations that we'd expect to see would be limited by the speed of light. The distance that a signal, gravitational or otherwise, would have been allowed to propagate if it were moving at the speed of light through the expanding universe that began with a singular event known as the Big Bang. But in a universe that underwent a period of inflation prior to the start of the hot Big Bang, we'd expect there to be density fluctuations on all scales, including on scales larger than the speed of light could have allowed a signal to travel since the start of the hot Big Bang. Because inflation essentially doubles the size of the universe in all three dimensions, with each tiny fraction of a second that passes. Fluctuations that occurred a few hundred fractions of a second ago are already stretched to a scale larger than the presently observable universe. In other words, the big test that one can perform is to examine the universe in all its gory details and look for either the presence or absence of this key feature, what cosmologists call superhorizon fluctuations. At any moment in the universe's history, there's a limit to how far a signal that's been traveling at the speed of light since the start of the hot Big Bang could have traveled. And that scale sets what's known as the cosmic horizon. Scales that are smaller than the horizon, known as subhorizon scales, can be influenced by physics that's occurred since the start of the hot Big Bang. Scales that are equal to the horizon, known as horizon scales, are the upper limit to what could have been influenced by physical signals since the start of the hot Big Bang. And scales that are greater than the horizon, known as superhorizon scales, are beyond the limit of what could have been caused by physical signals generated at or since the start of the hot Big Bang. In other words, if we can search the universe for signals that appear on superhorizon scales, that's a great way to discriminate between a non-inflationary universe that began with a singular hot Big Bang, which shouldn't have them at all, and an inflationary universe that possessed an inflationary period prior to the start of the hot Big Bang, which should possess these superhorizon fluctuations. Unfortunately, simply looking at a map of temperature fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background isn't enough on its own to tell these two scenarios apart. The temperature map of the cosmic microwave background can be broken up into different components, some of which occupy large angular scales on the sky, and some of which occupy small angular scales, as well as everything in between. The problem is that fluctuations on the largest scales have two possible causes. They could be created from the fluctuations that arose during an inflationary period, sure but they could also be created simply by the gravitational growth of structure in the late-time universe, which has a much larger cosmic horizon than the early-time universe. For example, if all you have is a gravitational potential well for a photon to climb out of, then climbing out of that well costs the photon energy. This is known as the Sachs-Wolf effect in physics and occurs for the cosmic microwave background at the point at which the photons were first emitted. However, if your photon falls into a gravitational potential well along the way, it gains energy. And then when it climbs back out again on its way to you, it loses energy. If the gravitational imperfection either grows or shrinks over time, which it does in multiple ways in a gravitating universe filled with dark energy, 
Then, various regions of space can appear hotter or colder than average based on the growth or shrinkage of density imperfections within it. This is known as the integrated Sachs-Wolf effect. So when we look at the temperature imperfections in the cosmic microwave background and we see them on these large cosmic scales, there isn't enough information there on its own to know whether they were generated by the Sachs-Wolf effect and are due to inflation. They were generated by the integrated Sachs-Wolf effect and are due to the growth shrinkage of foreground structures, or they're due to some combination of the two. Fortunately, however, looking at the temperature of the cosmic microwave background isn't the only way we get information about the universe. We can also look at the polarization data of the light from that background. Detecting polarization on its own isn't enough to show the existence of super horizon fluctuations, however. What you need to do is perform a correlation analysis between the polarized light and the temperature fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background and to correlate them on the same angular scales as one another. This is where things get really interesting because this is where observationally looking at the universe we have allows us to tell the singular Big Bang without inflation and the inflationary state that gives rise to the hot Big Bang scenarios apart. In both cases we expect to see sub-horizon correlations. At the end there can be no doubt that the universe is very very big but unfortunately there are the observable limits. We must remain curious and open-minded. The universe has a way of surprising us, revealing its mysteries in ways we never imagined. 